Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles was the franchise of my generation. Yes, the franchise. Everyone loved Ninja Turtles. Boys, girls, dogs, cats. Seriously, it was probably the most popular cartoon of its day. So naturally, toys and video games were a hot commodity. And the whole old shtick that licensed video games sucked really hadn't taken hold yet. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles for the NES was the first time a lot of us got to play as our favorite green heroes, and we weren't really disappointed. At least I wasn't. I really liked the game. And it kind of put the Ninja Turtles in the video game universe as staples. They're video game characters just as much as they are cartoon characters anymore. TMNT was a lot of fun, if incredibly difficult. And it'd still be another year or two until the NES port of the excellent arcade game came home to us. So we had to make do with what we had. And we liked it, dagnabbit! Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles is a one-player, side-scrolling action platformer that allows you to switch your turtles out on the fly. Each turtle has their unique weapon, and for a long time this is the only turtle game where there is some actual diversity between the brothers besides their appearance and maybe a special attack. The turtles all damage enemies to different degrees, with, surprisingly, Leonardo coming in as the weakest, slightly behind Michelangelo. Raphael and Donatello are the strongest turtles, and the non-purple clad brothers all get special damage bonuses to enemies depending on how much life they have left. So the developers were trying to balance out the turtles, but they didn't do a great job. Leonardo has a good range and speed, but he's weak. Michelangelo is the same, but has a better damage boost when his health is low, and performs a very quick overhead strike. Red Swayze, I, I, I mean Raphael, is powerful and fast, but his range is terrible. Donatello is the turtle most players stick to. He's the strongest of all four and has the longest range to boot, but he's the slowest and has a very poor horizontal range when aiming his weapon up or down. The platforming itself is easy to understand. You jump on platforms like in any other 2D side-scroller on the NES. But this game has a twist. The platforming isn't great. It's floaty and hard to control. There's so many areas where jumps are notoriously hard to pull off. Everyone has covered these and everyone has done everything in their willpower to complain about them the loudest. Some of these jumps are ridiculously stupid hard and they shouldn't be. End of story. The levels themselves are pretty cool though. Each stage has an overworld and several side-scrolling action boards where most of the gameplay takes place. The game has stages, but they aren't straightforward. You get to explore to find what you need to proceed through the stage, be it a special item or just the correct path. It's a little clunky and hard to find your way around, but it's a neat attempt. As far as enemies go, well, some of them are related to previous Ninja Turtle media. But there aren't enough cartoon references, damn it! Well, usually that's what people say. It honestly doesn't bother me at all. The turtles and the main villains and the support characters are all here, and that works for me. What I don't like about them are their respawn rates. Holy shit! Like, you can't make one mistake in the way you are walking if you don't want to respawn stuff. A lot of these enemies are easy to kill. One hit and they're dead. Others take a lot of damage before they fall, and they'll also deal out a lot of damage to your turtle in kind. Because of the floaty controls, it's really hard to not take damage. You pretty much have to be a master of the spinny ninja jumps and the not-so-spinny ninja jumps, as well as the speed at which your turtle can attack to get through areas unscathed. The graphics and music are great. Some people may say that TMNT has aged poorly in terms of graphics, but I think it looks gritty and cool, rough around the edges, kind of like the original comic. In fact, this game has art cues taken from the original comic rather than from the cartoon. While there are a few cartoon-specific things to make an appearance, Bebop and Rocksteady, the Turtle Blimp, uh, other stuff, but this game just looks way more like the comic than the TV show. 
Even the cover art of the game is a variant cover from the comic, complete with the turtles matching red bandanas. The music is rocking and groovy. With overdriven guitars and slick bass beats, the music is reminiscent of the time period in a weird way. It sounds like the 80s. Konami has always been great about music, and they do an excellent job here. After the first stage, which is pretty easy to get used to, well enough not to lose a turtle, you come into contact with the dam. After a longish side-scrolling stage, you have to dive in and take out the bombs threatening to blow up the dam, causing a disaster. People hate this level, with the rage of a thousand pizzas! But is it really that bad? With practice, not really. Anytime you lose a life, you're actually losing the ability to control a turtle. So if you lose Donatello early, you can't use the powerhouse Staff Thrasher until you find him tied up in a seemingly random location. Rescuing your captured brothers usually means a trek out of the way, and if you aren't using a guide or your memory, they're not that easy to find, and you take a ton of damage getting to them. After all four turtles are captured, it's game over. And guess what? You only get two continues. This game isn't easy, and there aren't many things that make it much easier. You can, however, collect power-ups that give your turtle a ranged weapon that usually does more damage than their default. These are limited to however much ammunition you have, but the throwing stars and the boomerangs pop up fairly often after defeating enemies. The scrolls, however, don't pop up randomly as far as I can tell, and they're also the most powerful weapon in the game. These allow the turtles to throw a key blast that tears through everything in its path. It's dope. But the funny thing is, I still love this stupid game. I still play it frequently, like several times a year. It's one of those games I'll pop into my NES because I'm bored. I've never beaten it, even at the time this video was recorded. I still haven't got all the way through it without cheating with save states. I don't count that shit. I love this game entirely because of the rose-colored glasses in there. Just like countless other really tough or really unfair NES games that I had no choice but to play growing up because that's all I had. And honestly, just because of the subject matter, this one stuck out just a little bit more than the others. Now what I want to do is I want to take TMNT and I want to fix it. I want to make it better. I want to make it a great game, not just a mediocre game. And no, I don't mean literally. I don't know how to hack NES ROMs or program. I'm no John Riggs. Get out of my face! Holy Christ, if there is one thing that needs fixing in this game above all else, it's the platforming. Konami had made a good platforming action game up until this point, and whoever decided to code Ninja Turtles as an inaccurate float fest is a freaking moron. Sorry. Anytime simple jumps can't be made because your character controls too wildly, it's a flaw. So let's take a game that could possibly be a good replacement. Ninja Gaiden is a good and appropriate choice. These turtles are ninja. Running around quickly with the ability to latch onto walls is perfect. But we could also take a look at a game like Castlevania. It's slower paced, just like Ninja Turtles. There is knockback when taking enemy damage, and while some may say Castlevania games are a bit clunky, they're a ton more accurate and a lot more fun to play. When I say fix the enemies, I don't mean make them more in line with a cartoon. I mean fix their spawn rates and their placement on screen. Games like Castlevania Ninja Gaiden have exceptional enemy placement, and by exceptional, I mean cleverly evil. Sure, you have to play through a few times to get an idea about where an enemy may show up, but it's almost always going to show up at the same place every time. Even if TMNT kept the random enemy sets where different enemies appear on screen as you load the stage, having a more thoughtful and clever placement would do wonders. And the spawn rate needs fixing while we're at it. These enemies will pop back up on screen if you take just one step forward and one step back, and so many will spawn on screen at times that the flicker and slowdown negatively affects the experience. Also, with all the backtracking of stages due to hard to make jumps, having enemies stay dead at least for a while would be nice. Fixing platforming and enemy placement may make this part a moot point though. 
Leonardo has fucking swords. Swords! Like, slice through you katana blades. And he's the weakest turtle? Donatello is the strongest turtle, and he also has the longest range. He's also a scientific type. He's not naturally the strongest turtle. Obviously, the team at Konami didn't balance these guys out correctly according to established character traits. So here is what I propose. The strongest turtle. In most forms of media, he's the strongest. So it makes sense here. Also, having the shortest range, there needs to be a reason other than speed to make him useful. Make Wrath the powerhouse and average his speed out a bit. Leo will be the next strongest turtle. He doesn't have the raw power that Raph has, but he's got some deadly weapons. Pair that with good range and speed, and he's the overall balanced turtle. Mikey is the most naturally gifted athlete of the bunch, making him a bit lazier and carefree in most media. His talent allows him to keep up with the harder working brothers. Mikey is as strong as Leo, and much faster, but his range is shorter. He'll be faster, less ranged, but still balanced. Since Donnie is typically the scientist, he's not portrayed as the strongest. While he has range, he's a bit slower than Leo, but not as slow as he was before. I mean, most staff users are pretty quick. He's also weaker than Mikey and Leo, but his massive range makes up for it. He plays more utility in that he's able to take enemies out from a distance and clear the path more easily. I really like the idea of turtles getting captured and having to rescue them, but having to go way out of your way to find the captured turtles and only having two continues is a bit nuts. I'm proposing an overall to the captured turtles, giving you the ability to rescue them at the end of every level, meaning you'll start each level with a full stock of turtles. In addition, we'll give the player unlimited continues. Why you ask? Because two notorious difficult games that I keep bringing up, Ninja Gaiden and Castlevania, have unlimited continues. Giving the players their turtles back at the beginning of each level and an unlimited stock of continues doesn't mean the game has to be easy. The game can still be a relentless challenge, but it's also a kid's game. Giving the kids of the late 80s an easier chance to complete a very hard game makes them happier and more skilled. Play that later level over and over again and eventually they'll get it. And if they get good at a game, chances are they'll come back again and again. Well, that's how I am, anyway. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles was a huge success by itself. It didn't need all the extra bells and whistles to be a great game. It just needed this logo across the top to be successful. TMNT was such a hot item in the 80s that everybody had to have a game like this. And it kind of shows. This is a really common, easy-to-find, cheap game now. And, you know, if you want it, you're not going to have to shell over. <laughs> shell over. You're not going to have to shell over too much money to, uh, to pick it up. Now, honestly, I think Konami or Ultra, who published it in the North American region, what they could have done was made this game better, made this game legendary, make it legendarily good. And they just didn't. And I really feel like that that was a lost opportunity. So if there's anything else for Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles on the NES that you feel would make an incredibly good improvement to make this game a lot better that I didn't cover, let's talk about it. Throw it in the comments and we'll, uh, we'll discuss it. But that's all I have for today and I appreciate you guys watching. Later! Make sure to check out Magnus Von Black's channel. He did the awesome intro cover for me, and he is an amazing guitar player. Don't forget to subscribe to him. Also, check out my other videos. I do a lot of these, and hopefully you guys enjoy them. Thanks for subscribing. I appreciate it.